Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Leslie Richardson, and today we are diving into the world of GitHub, specifically about GitHub and AI and how Copilot can enable you to write more secure applications. So joining me to talk about that is Brian Randall. How are you doing, Brian? I'm wonderful, Leslie. How you been? I have been doing pretty great. I am really sad the summer is coming to an end so quickly. My goodness. I know. How is it at the end of August? Where'd my summer go? It's so sad. I just want to go back in time (laughs) to when I wasn't appreciating it nearly enough. (laughs) Exactly. Uh, We're already starting to get the rain back in Seattle. No. Well, it's nice and sunny here in Southern California, so I'll send the good juju your way. Shoot. Well, before we talk about the even sunnier thing that is having more secure apps, because that's super important, tell us a bit a little a little more about yourself. I think we've seen you quite a couple times on this show, but for the uninitiated, who are you? So I'm um, obviously big nerd. Um, I work at GitHub. I'm in developer relations, which means I get to play with these tools all day and make sure that they do everything we want to do and show the goodness that is technology that can well, you know, get, help you enjoy your summer more, right? No one right. wants to be in working all night. And I know. You know if you're shipping more secure code, that's going to help you. I've been doing writing code for more than, we'll just go into decades. We'll just not even get into the details. <laughs> um, but I've been working with Microsoft tool stack forever, and I just love it. And uh, being a GitHub is great because, you know, as the home of open source, we're out to make the world a better place. And um, I really think our tools are designed to do that for you and uh, and your enterprise as well. So if you want to give us money, that's great. But if you're doing open source, we're happy to give back to you. Awesome. So speaking of making the world a better place, security is pretty important for that, or at least <laughs> being able to have a good time and do it without things being compromised. So tell me a little bit more about what's going on with GitHub and security. Well, so we we have this product called GitHub Advanced Security, and it is a collection of tools designed you to to help you find and remediate uh, issues in your application, most notably security issues. Um, and this may be because, for example, you need to be on a newer library that is uh, uh, an old version has been found vulnerable. So we have a feature called Dependapod that does that. But another problem you run into is developers. We, you know, we often can write mistakenly in secure code. And so for a while, we've had a feature called code uh, scanning. And code scanning is built on top of what we call code QL. It's a, it's a security language that will scan your code for vulnerability and notify you of that. The problem with that is if you start looking into the issue is, is that finding the bug is one thing, fixing it is another. And so we've got this new mantra this year, which is found means fixed. And that's through the introduction of a new feature called GitHub Copilot Autofix. And it's pretty darn amazing. And it's been in beta for a few months. I've got a blog post up on the screen. We're going to give you a short URL, uh, gh.io, ghasaf blog. We'll put it in the notes as well. And if you go to the blog post, we've got some great data from our CISO, Mike Hanley, who's also our senior VP of engineering and he goes through and talks about what it is, et cetera. But I want to get down here to some figures. People during the beta have found that they're fixing things three times faster, seven times faster when fixing cross-site scripting vulnerabilities, and 12 times faster fixing SQL injection vulnerabilities. So put this in context, and there's some nice detail in the article. Let's just take a look at the cross-site scripting vulnerability, something that's common for web development taking you 22 minutes using Copilot Autofix versus almost three hours if you have to do it manually. And that's part of the big thing here. What we want to do is help you pay down that security debt, which is find it, but more importantly, fix it and fix it as quickly as possible. Um, And, you know, I don't know about you, you know, um, Leslie, but sometimes you write code and then it's out of your head. Yeah. Like I wrote it at 2 a.m. I don't want to think about it. It was rough. Yeah, and you know, so then to, to find that a vulnerability comes out a month later because maybe you're using a third party library, you're using something, maybe you just wrote the code a certain way and it turns out that's insecure, but not everybody realized that until some 
you know, these researchers, you know, sitting up at night when we're out, you know, trying to have a good time. They're out working hard to try and break things. And they find that the code you wrote is bad. So then they add that to the code scanning libraries like uh, uh, GitHub Advanced Security. And now they've said your code that you wrote a month ago, two months ago, is now broken. Now you got to fix this. So now you got to get your head into the zone. Right. You got to figure get out what you're doing. Right. Try and, to remember what you wrote. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And, I mean, come on. I mean, you know, I, I write SQL sometimes. I'm having to write JavaScript now and I'm writing C Sharp. And, you know, building a polyglot is, is painful at times. So what we want to do is bring the intelligence of the community and, dare I say, AI to help you do this. So you want to see this in action? Yes. Fantastic. So what I've got over here is I've got a repo um, up on github.com. Now, this is a private repo. So by default, this feature is available um, as part of the larger GitHub Advanced Security family. And what you do is you go into settings and you make sure that you've got things turned on. And the way you do that is under code security and analysis. You're going to make sure that you've turned on GitHub Advanced Security and when you do, there's a couple things that go on. Number one is you turn on code QL analysis. So I've done that. And you can see I did a scan four hours ago to make sure I was ready. But then you see we have this new big toggle button here. Turn it on, Copilot auto fix. Now, what happens is when code QL does its analysis, it will then open up issues inside the security section of your repo. And you'll see I've got Dependabot which is how we determine if you're, you're using an old library, like an old JavaScript library, an old NuGet package, an old Maven package, et cetera. Code scanning is where we see our security vulnerabilities based upon the way we wrote our code. And finally, we also have a feature called secret scanning. You can see I've got something in here as well. But let's go look at code scanning, and you'll see that I've got two different issues. Both are marked as high. Both were detected by code QL. Let's take a look at this top one here, uncontrolled data used in path expression. So right away, I see this is in a JavaScript file, and I'm like, okay, what did I do? So I click it, and what happens here is we come in and show you where the problem is at, and we tell you more about this type of problem. And you can see this is a path injection vulnerability. We can see it's shown up in jQuery that we're using, and you can see an example of bad code right there. And then it says, hey, here's some good code. Now, right here, you know, if you just stop, this is great because this helped me find it. But now I've got to get the project loaded. i got to go <laughs> fix it. I'm going to run my extensive test suite against it. And finally, I'm going to create a PR, right? So we have all this great data, but now we have this magic button, generate fix. So I'm going to click it. And you can see this is Copot. It's going to help us. So it's going to generate a fix. So it's taking a look at what's going on, and what it does is it collects all the data about this particular bug, and it basically creates a prompt, and it sends it back to the LLM in a request, and we see that it says, okay, to fix this, we're going to do the following, and it shows us that we're going to take this code right here and update it with this code. And, of course, the way we do that on GitHub is with a PR. So all you have to do is click the PR with the fix, and away it goes. Now, I don't have any other validation going on in here except for the default code QL validation. So that's going to run. But if you had other types of operations that run as part of your validation process, they would run here. So, for example, automated tests. For example, we're using Playwright or some other tool like that. Nice. So this is going to go and kick off a job and do that. Now, I've already done that to show you what it looks like when it's done. And I've done two things. Number one, I made sure all the checks passed. And so if we open this up, you'll see that the code QL scanning says, hey, this is much better. And number two, I used a feature of Copilot to generate this pull request message. So you'll notice the default one, eh, not so great. We are fixing alert number two. How about if we embellish that by saying this pull request includes security improvements. We can see the commits. We can see the checks that were done. And finally, we can see the exact file that's changed. So the only thing that's left for me to do at this point is to come down and basically merge this pull request. That is GitHub Copilot Autofix. Wow. Very easy. I like it. That, now, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> the downside of this, this is oh, if you want to use it with private repos, you're making money, hopefully you got to give us some money, so you have to pay for it. However, 
I got great news next month, and this is in the blog post as well. We provide almost all of GitHub Advanced Security to open source and public repos. So you'll see, for example, if I come in here to this public demo, there's just some code in here that I put. And if I go to settings, you'll see that I can come into code security and analysis, and I have the ability to turn on a lot of those same features, including code QL analysis. So if I were to set this up, I would get those alerts that would find the problem. However, you'll notice there's no big blue button here. The good news is next month, we're going to roll out that blue button to public repos and to open source. So we want to give back to the community and help everybody remediate those security issues faster. That so, is so exciting. And I, I just love it. I love it too. That was very fast. I like that the copilot also explains why it's a security concern. Sometimes, you know, when you're new to the security realms or you wrote, some code haphazardly at 2 a.m. You're not really thinking about it. And it can be hard to just even parse well, what's wrong with it. I, I get it. I got to fix it. But like, just so I don't make the same mistake again in the future, it's good to get that additional input on. Here's why it's better to do uh, this instead of what you previously did. I'm totally with you. It, you know, just the education part is, is really invaluable. But again, that there's that extra gap of, okay, you've educated me, but I got to understand how to fix in my application is, right. is where Copilot really just steps ahead because it's able to look at the larger context of the app and say, you know, this might also be impacted. This was a simple example, but as I, as I said in the blog post gives you some data, we've had lots of customers using it over the last few months and doing it on larger bits of code. And we're seeing even great success in GitHub as we use it on github.com. Um, in fact, in at GitHub Universe, Mike Hanley is going to be doing a talk how GitHub secures GitHub with GitHub. And so we're really, really happy about the progress we've made with this tool. And we really want everybody to try it out. So at a minimum, just go create yourself a public repo. You'll be able to give it a try and be able to try auto fix in a few weeks and be able to get rid of these bugs more quickly. Um, and again, spend more time adding those great features that users want. Sweet. And then in that security tab, like there were so many different options to enable on top of gas and stuff. So like, I mean, how do you even go about which to enable? Should you just enable all of them? <laughs> well, it, it is one of those things. And, and we do understand, you know, there, there is sometimes that overall noise effect, but each one of these things is critical. And we really, you should consider them. The first off is yes, turning on Dependabot. That's this first one. Because you start looking at applications, you know, the numbers are staggering, you know, the average application is, you know, over 70, 75 percent of it is based on open source, right? We're using JavaScript libraries, NuGet packages, et cetera. And so Dependabot will help you keep track of that graph and help you understand that, hey, you're on an older library. You know, for example, uh, the Noonsoft JSON library is, is a library that is almost just ubiquitous to modern .NET applications. And unfortunately, there are some security vulnerabilities if you're not on the latest one. And so Dependabot will help you do that. So yes, turning this on does add some noise, but it will help you. And you'll notice, for example, we have the ability here with some of these security updates to group them, right? Rather than giving you, you know, 20 individual ones, we'll give you one larger one where we've tried to figure out where there aren't major issues. Again, this doesn't eliminate you from taking the time to understand what Dependabot is doing and testing your app, right? But by using the pull request process, we give that opportunity to test the fix in isolation, right? We're not going to ever just go and YOLO and change your code, right? Uh, so this is probably the first thing, yes, turn on Dependabot. Um, you can decide whether you want version updates. This is one of those things that, you know, some people like to leave off because they have a regular cadence of moving to new versions um, versus, uh, you know, taking care of security fixes that will be often minor updates. Um you have a choice on whether you want to run it with our action runners or using self-hosted. Uh, then you get down to turn on GitHub Advanced Security. And within that, we have code scanning, which I think I've shown you is kind of a no-brainer. We really want to do that. And then we have the ability to do things like secret scanning. This is a feature here, uh, again, that is also available uh, for open source users. Um, 
there's more knobs in gas right now if you're using the paid version and i've got a beta feature enabled which is using ai to detect additional secrets so we do some pattern matching to look for well-known secrets and when we find a secret that's well known we can even notify the provider so you know, you've, I'm sure heard of people using their, you know, leave their storage keys in there, right. you know, PATs. <laughs> Maybe you were something and you forgot to uh -huh. test later. Yeah. <laughs> totally. And so this will help you with that. And then, you know, one of our great features is push protection. Let's keep the secret out of our source code in the first place. Uh, and so this will look for well-known problems there. So again, a lot of these you really can just turn on. Depend upon requires a little more probably thinking about it, uh, most most notably because, you know, it can be overwhelming at first. And again, with secret scanning, occasionally you will get a false positive. So it's, you know, we can sometimes misread a piece of data and think that it's a key when it just happens to be just a big blob of data. Uh, but in any case, you know, use the AI, use the tools to help you find problems more quickly. And yes, like I said, almost all the stuff is available if you're using public or open source projects. So give it a try, kick the tires. And yes, if you think it's worthwhile, invest in your enterprise and uh, you know add that to your team. Awesome. Well, this is really exciting stuff, especially now that it's about to hit the open source community. That is exactly. going to be very impactful. I mean, so many large open source communities out there that could definitely use the extra security just for uh, posterity. So that's really exciting. Yeah. You know, just again, it's all about, you know, we're not trying to replace anybody. We're just trying to, you know, let's shave off those time blocks that right. you can spend focusing on the core details and, and get you to fixing problems and then on to adding new features. Exactly. And it's like, I know not everyone is either well-versed in security or even likes doing security work sometimes. So any way to make it easier, but also still keep an app that's incredibly secure on top of that is a win in my eyes. Yeah. So, I, I, I just, I don't know what I'd do without it. So I'm really glad to have it. I'm glad we're giving it to the community. Awesome. I'm looking to see more about it. So for folks who want to learn even more about GitHub Advanced Security or GAS for short, where can they go? Well, they can go to this blog post right here. And from there, there's additional links that will uh, take them to uh, the product information, documentation. And of course, just go create a repo on github.com, make it public, and then go to the security tab. And you can take a look at the different areas that we look at, as you can see here. And finally, go into settings and scroll down right there to code, analysis, code security and analysis, excuse me. And, uh, you know, kick the tires and give it a go. Awesome. Well, Brian, thank you so much for sharing. That was really great, as always. You're very and welcome. Thanks for having me. It's always great to be on the show and to see you virtually. And uh, hopefully we'll have something new in a few months that I can come back. Definitely. Don't be a stranger. Like, yeah. <laughs> hopefully we're not strangers at this point. Yes. But yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> well, thanks, Brian. And thanks to all the viewers out there. Go try out GitHub Advanced Security, especially a month from now, once it opens up for all the open source projects out there. And happy coding.